Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back to the fourth lecture for Chapter 10 on Center Manifold Theory, where we're going to do two examples which show how we apply Center Manifold Theory in a very specific setting. Okay, so the first example, two-dimensional autonomous vector field on the plane. And if you write this in matrix form, you can see it's in exactly in the form that uh, I developed the general theory for. The origin is a fixed point, and the Jacobian associated with the linearization is given by this equation. So one eigenvalue is zero, non-hyperbolic, and one eigenvalue is minus one. So we know we have a one-dimensional center manifold and a one-dimensional stable manifold. We're going to seek an approximate solution to the center manifold according to the equation and the theorem that I developed last time. We're going to assume a center manifold that's a form of a polynomial, and it's of this form. So why did I start with quadratic terms? Because the center manifold passes through the origin, no constants, and it's tangent to the origin, or tangent to the center subspace at the origin. That's why in realizing these conditions, I need to make sure that it's in the standard form for writing all these things down. But that example, this example was in the standard form. So I plug that equation into the center manifold equation. And I multiply everything out and I balance the coefficients on the different terms. We have a power series. And so, so the, um, if, if it's going to equal zero, the coefficients on each power have to vanish. So solving for those on the quadratic and cubic, I can easily find that a is 1 and b is 0. So that gives me a center manifold having this form. If I substitute that into the equations, I'm just leaving x, not, not um, putting in the u right now. We have this equation for the center manifold equation. So we see that for x sufficiently small, x dot is positive. So on the center manifold, this is what the flow looks like. The arrows go in this way, and so the origin is unstable. Now it's... Uh, It's interesting. You could make the claim that okay, let's let's the y the y components decay to zero equal exponentially fast. So why don't we just set y equal to zero? That's approximating the, the center manifold by the tangent space, the center subspace which is tangent to the center manifold at the origin, just set y equal to 0, and we're left with what? x dot equals minus x to the fifth. And that is not the same as x to minus x to, the, x to the fourth, or x to the fourth, and we get a different answer for stability. So I've said that in a rather clumsy way, but the curvature of the center manifold is important. We can't just approximate it by the tangent plane to the center manifold or the center subspace. We need those nonlinear terms. All right, one more example. The example 
x dot equals x y, y dot equals minus y plus x cubed. Okay. Equation in the right form. We see the origin is, is a fixed point, and it's non-hyperbolic, one-dimensional center manifold, one-dimensional stable manifold. We assume a center manifold having this power series expansion. No constant, no linear terms. For the reasons I just said, we plug it into this equation. We set the coefficients to the quadratic and cubic terms equal to zero. Now we only have cubic terms. So that's the equation for the center manifold. So locally it looks like this cubic. The equation restricted to the center manifold, we see it's always positive, and the origin is unstable in this case. So hopefully what you see is that the application of center manifold theory is very algorithmic. It's algebra, it's algebra, and it can be implemented by symbolic manipulation codes, uh, and it works. It works. Um, it works very well for large systems when you have when you employ um, computational linear algebra with symbolic manipulation codes. It's a very useful tool for telling you when you have stability that's driven by the nonlinear terms, and that's going to be the case when the origin is, or the, the equilibrium point is not hyperbolic, and the nonlinear terms then govern stability. Okay, that finishes up this chapter. I want to talk a little bit about the exercises, and then maybe discuss the appendices. So, that's it for now. Bye, everybody.